Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the session today where we're going to be talking about, um, well, it's titled Samsung Innovations with Immersive Technologies. So uh, you're going to have two speakers today. I am your first, uh, Damon Hernandez. Uh, I am on the um, Samsung Internet team, which we'll touch into a little bit uh, with a focus more on the immersive technology side. Um, but what this uh, talk is about uh, more so, and as I see some familiar and friendly faces in the audience, is that uh, I'm a pretty big fan of community. So uh, please this, uh, do know that this is going to be a little bit more of trying to uh, share with you some of the great things that we're uh, doing and enabling, where it really is about uh, empowering the AR and VR community. So um, first up, it's, you know, the tools for VR and AR. And I do say AR is because I'm sure, as a lot of people know, you know, that pass-through camera uh, gives you the opportunity to do augmented reality in addition to virtual reality. And, you know, uh, we have five million headsets out there. So from the commercial uh, side, you know, not um, the Google Cardboard, but we're definitely leading the charge when it comes to, you know, bringing uh, VR to the masses. And I'm sure, as you've seen with the, um, the latest, uh, we have our S8, which recently launched with um, the Gear VR headset and the new controller, uh, which is a lot of fun. So I definitely recommend we have a booth. Uh, feel free to come by the booth, check it out. Uh, we have a lot of fun titles. Um, just a real quick show of hands, has anyone had a chance to play with uh, the controllers? OK, great, great. Um, I'm a very interactive presenter, so you're going to definitely get your, your arm workout today. So um, that'll be fun. And, and so as far as setting the ecosystem, this is what's really kind of neat. As a person who's been in the VR space um, only since about 2007, um, you know, I was one of those that was a firm believer in the dedicated, you know, kind of uh, full room scale type scenario. But, you know, the reality is, right, is that anyone that has a cell phone in their pocket that's within the past two years really already has a VR device, right? And that's what's really exciting about the mobile virtual reality. And definitely where at Samsung we find ourselves um, not necessarily being uh, Dr. Evil, but being Dr. Good when it comes to really helping um, drive VR to the mass adoption. And, and of course, you know, this is, I think, the, the quickest way out of the gate that a lot of people did this, right, is it was about how do you enhance entertainment? And, and with that, uh, you know, here are some great examples, I think. Um, hopefully PowerPoint won't fail me. But how many people in here have had a chance to check out uh, the whole series of great little shorts on the left? All right, awesome, awesome. Um, so this was done uh, for the gear, uh, as you can see here on the left. I'm um, again from Baobab. And um, really exciting to see the way that, again, how are uh, now filmmakers and others using VR to create really engaging narratives? And I'm sure there's a lot of really good presentations today. And then also, on the other side of that, it's the gaming component, right? And here's just a little quote from some of the guys at GPC Games as far as what they did um, with, a, with a duck hunt. And as you know, if, if anyone who's been in the Oculus um, store, there's quite a lot of different uh, games out there that one can explore. Uh, I, myself, I'll preface and say that my background is not in game development, um, but even I can enjoy those types of experiences. So being able to jump right in and, and know that there's a, a good amount of library of, of games out there has, has been a nice offering for people, as right now, more and more uh, virtual reality, I think, is waiting for the tools to be easier, right? And, and so another way that, you know, at Samsung we look to, you know, enhance entertainment is really through things uh, like Samsung VR, where here you have the opportunity to go and explore um, a variety of different um, videos in 360 uh, in, in this different uh, framework. Uh, any people submitted stuff to Samsung VR or played with that? Okay. Ah, I love your honesty. All right. Um, so uh, definitely, uh, you know, this is, this is our own internal way of doing this. Um, but then also what really excites me, for those that also know, is, is how it really is about enhancing reality, okay? I think that what's been fun is, you know, uh, being in this space, you hear a lot of people talk about, well, it could be used for this, it could be used for that. And I think that's the fun thing about when you say reality is that you're in you capture everything, right? And, and this is where VR has been for quite some time, especially with AR as well. Uh, do we have anyone here who's looking at the medical space? 
okay? Um, have you heard of uh, MIRA, M-I-A-R? This is a conference on medical imaging and augmented reality. This is in its 13th year. There is a uh, conference that's for construction. It's construction, uh, it's, uh, um, what is, I think it's called Construct uh, VR, can't remember cor correctly, but essentially the whole purpose and the name of it is construction and virtual reality applications. It is in its 16th year, right? Actually 17th, it started in 2000. So when we think about virtual reality coming into reality and how it can enhance, it's been there for a while. It's just now it's scalable. And so what we're seeing here is in the top left, you have an example of where surgeons essentially are using, a, this is in the, the Gear VR, for training and looking at other um, areas there when it comes to uh, hospital prep. Uh, in the middle next to that is a, is a group called BIM Object who essentially focuses on the uh, architecture, engineering, construction industry with a library of smart objects. So what's interesting here is that if you are uh, coming from that space, or even if you're coming from gaming or others, and you want to say, how can I bring in geometry that isn't just representation, but it has metadata attached to it? That's an example of a group that actually is doing that, and then they're using VR and web VR to better communicate to their customers, product building manufacturers and others, um, exactly what their um, different uh, products uh, enable and allow for. Um, next to that, of course, as a, as, as a lot of people have heard and I'm also excited about, is therapy, right? How can you help people that essentially are dealing with PTSD, um, you know, looking at a lot of great work out there when it comes to things like, you know, uh, uh, helping uh, with VR to divert our minds off of the pain so that way you don't have to do as much uh, anesthesia for, for different things. Uh, burn, there's a lot of interesting uh, research that actually came out of the HIT lab up in UW, uh, University of Washington, sorry, um, for those that aren't from up there, uh, where essentially they, they used um, for uh, changing the bandages of burn victims. They put them in VR and were able to help uh, lower the amount of pain medication that they needed. And then also when we look at things that are really important, I think that, um, you know, regardless of one's political landscape, what we have learned is that there are a lot of people out there that are worried about essentially automation and jobs, right? Right now, we are seeing a vacuum across real world industries of people who are not able to essentially get the training and the skills that they need, period. And so virtual reality is this new way of doing this. So in the bottom left, what you see down there is Congressman Jim Himes is actually experiencing a Gear VR application that is around not only corporate training, but also around just training in general, right? Especially for these people that are starting to see their jobs be replaced by automation and technology. And, and so the congressman there is experiencing essentially an educational application. And then also as we're starting to see it go into education into the classrooms, Right? Companies like Lifelike and others that are starting to provide these, these services for those that actually now can bring it into the classroom. And what's great about the mobile device is that um, it, it really is in a lot more children's pockets than you think of. Um, I had the opportunity to talk to a teacher who was a teacher at a West Baltimore um, school. Okay, I don't know if many of you know about what kind of demographics are in West Baltimore, all right? But for those that do, these are children that are probably on an assisted lunch program, but most of them have smartphones, right? So the idea of saying, how can we enhance and change the education, the infrastructure is starting to get there, even without the work of people like Samsung. But, but of course, we do and are engaged in those things and are excited to see it. And then, of course, in retail and other in the e-commerce. And so what excites me about this is that this is where you start to see how does these technologies begin to influence not industries that are in the billions, okay, and I'm probably getting this quote wrong because it changes all the time, but I think by 2020, gaming is supposed to be around 160, 165 billion dollar industry, okay? Construction just in the U.S. is one trillion. Globally, it's 10 trillion. So this is what's really exciting for those that are looking at enterprise solutions. So to carry on, so then it really is about how do we enable the creators? Right? How do we empower you, the content makers? We're just a hardware company, but we want to make sure that you have the right tools as you're going out there to tell your story, create a fun experience, or to change an industry. How can we provide you the best tools for that? So starting off more with a little bit of the artist, um, you know, we, we have these uh, cameras, which I think most people are familiar with. Um, right now, 
uh, I am streaming this in 4K. So this is probably the first Vision Summit in 180, it's not 360, because there'd be nothing fun to see on this side, that I think has ever been recorded. So y'all are all a part of uh, some form of weird history. Awesome, yay, all right, exactly, wave. Um, and of course, now that I say that, uh, it probably won't, you know, YouTube won't save it for me on the back end, but, uh, but here as we have, so with the new phone, uh, or I'm sorry, with the new cameras, as you can see, um, it's definitely smaller, it's a nicer little form factor there. It does record in 4K, and it does broadcast live. Um, and, and, it, and it really is kind of an intuitive little thing. So uh, how many people in here have the first camera on the right there? All right, so you know that when that's going into a pocket, it's a little bit difficult. So, uh, so definitely the newer form factor is nice. Um, but the existing camera also has been a really, really great one. I, I personally have uh, one of these. And uh, again, between the stitching software that's available and then the app to control it from the phone, um, it's, it's, it's awesome. And then with the newer devices, uh, also it, it, uh, if you have an iPhone, you're, you're covered there. So, so for the real world artist and the person who says, hey, I have, um, you know, again, that story to tell, here's the tools that we're trying to uh, enable for the creative and the artist. Moving one step on, for the mobile developer, okay? So the person who says, you know what, I actually wanna dive into Android uh, development, Java. Um, what we have here is a framework that we offer called Gear VRF. And so uh, I don't know if it's mentioned here because I'm not one to read slides even though I put them up here. Uh, this is a open source project. Now, for those that are looking at this from, you know, again, enterprise solutions or maybe even gaming or others, this could be important, right? You own your IP. This is all yours at the end of the day. Now that QR code there will actually take you to the, the Gear VRF framework uh, page where you can learn more information. And also, um, I highly recommend uh, for people that are interested in enterprise, take a look at this. And also, if you're not a Java guy, but more of JavaScript, um, all, there, there are some uh, things there as well that, that make the development with the Gear VRF framework with JavaScript uh, a lot more friendly. Everyone got the QR code that wanted to take a picture of it? All right, awesome. Then next for the web developer, which uh, as I said, coming from uh, the, the Samsung internet team, this is the exciting one for me. So is there anyone in this room that has not heard of web VR? Awesome. You'll need to come with me everywhere. Um, uh, so I won't spend too much time on what WebVR is then, since everyone in here knows it, but just a, a couple little plugs. Um, you know, we were the first uh, headset to have an internet browser, and we were the first one to support WebVR uh, since um, April of, of last year. And then also more than that, Samsung is very much committed to helping grow the WebVR ecosystem. We hosted the uh, first W3C WebVR workshop uh, there in, in uh, the Bay Area. Uh, California for those, because there's a lot of bays. But, um, and, and it's really been exciting for us to, to work with all the different folks on, on bringing this to the web, right? And my own opinion, the web will win at the end of the day. And it's so much easier when the people who you want to experience what it is that you're doing have the only barrier to entry being make sure you have an updated browser and click on this link, right? It's so great. So, so just to give a shout out to um, some of the uh, platforms uh, that are available, of course, the folks over at Mozilla are doing an amazing job with A-Frame. A lot of great uh, you know, uh, resources and, and things to follow along there. For those that want to jump in a little bit more on the enterprise side and dealing with stuff that um, even our great keynote, Tony Parisi, kicked off back in the 90s, um, there's X3DOM based off of the old uh, VRML. And then, of course, um, you know, Oculus is coming out with, uh, or has come out with React VR, um, and that's very exciting to see the work that they're doing there. So uh, it's, it's nice to see the way that folks are stepping up. And these are just some of the frameworks that are available, mind you, not all of them. But since everyone in this room knows what it is, I won't spend too much time here. So I think what most folks like to uh, figure out is um, what's new. Uh, so I wouldn't be allowed to be up here if I did not share with you what Samsung Internet. So again, this is where we're all friends now, honesty. How many folks in here know what Samsung Internet is or that we had a web browser? Awesome, how many of those people use it? 
Awesome. Okay. I'm buying y'all lunch. All right. So, um, so yes, we do make an internet browser. Uh, the great thing about that, as I'll show in one moment, um, is, is that when it comes to, you know, again, integration with the phone itself, right? We have a lot of advantages there that you'll kind of see. And, and so beforehand, it was the logo on the left, which is now going over to the logo to the right. But enough about what I have to say, it's video time. So hopefully this will work as smooth in theory. And there's not really too much sound to this, but let me. Oh, thank you. I was just sitting here watching the, the video. So let's, uh, well, now we know that VLC does not do that. So, um, See, this is why you guys are the best audience, I would say, that any guy could ask for. So um, let me resize, because that looks like that's going to be an issue here. It worked better in the practice run. And when stuff is huge. Thank you, but I can take no credit for making that video. Um, uh, and I do not recommend wearing a Gear VR headset while you drive. Um, but so as we move through, so what you saw there, uh, some of the features-wise, is that we've definitely kind of given a revamp to the, to the home page for those um, that are familiar with the VR browser. Uh, we have added um, a, a video content area. And of course, you have the voice to text. You have the different modes here, as you can see. So again. How do we enable the content creators, right? You create the experiences with whatever 360 camera you'd like. And then this way, you're letting people be able to find this content much quicker through video curation and, and others. Um, so this is kind of uh, an example uh, here, as you can see. Sorry, it, once I projected over there, it killed it here. So um, I'm kind of having to look at this sideways with, with you as well. Um, but we've completely revamped the whole inside. Uh, it's very uh, interactive. Uh, well, it's more interactive now. It's a little dynamic. Um, on the right, you have your quick access. So just kind of running through the different. Uh, let me get back over here. Oh, fun. PowerPoint has frozen on me. So just give me one moment, folks. Yeah. Yay. 
So that's the next startup idea, come up with something better in PowerPoint. Um, so on the right, uh, we have the quick access, which essentially is your bookmarks. Um, and, and then another feature that we've implemented um, on the, uh, for our browser is essentially the ability to change the skybox. So what's been neat about this is if you create just a web page, this doesn't necessarily have to be a web VR page, but you have a 360 image or 360 content, right? You can now have that become the window dressing for the experience. So, you know, if you are uh, essentially the news, you're a journalist, you're a blogger, right? You just have some cool content. You now have the ability to not just create a compelling web page that can go into web VR, but before someone steps into the virtual reality web, you're able to go ahead and give them a little fill and a teaser for this level of immersion, um, as you can see here. So just a simple click, and it literally is one script on the bottom of your, of your HTML page that allows for this. Then some other things that are kind of fun, um, and, is, and for those that are in enterprise, this actually is kind of important. And even, uh, do we have any actual web developers in here? Okay, awesome. Then for those that are doing web development and then focused on enterprise and others, we have what's known as Samsung Pass. So this is using the biometrics uh, for authentication. And then also we have Samsung Pay integration, okay? So this is quick checkout. Now, why does this matter? If you're building a web VR application or a VR application in the future, wouldn't it be nice if you could make sure in medical that due to HIPAA compliance, that person that's seeing that information is the doctor it's supposed to be, authenticated by his biometric data. This is important. If you're building games and things like that, maybe not so much. But if you're building a web interface that has a VR component that is going to help people that control smart cities, medical care, pretty much any reality part, when you build for reality, you bring in all the legalities and litigious nature of those industries. You want to make sure that the person who is accessing that data is the person that they say they are, right? So when it comes to the biometric authentications, this is key. And this is another area where Samsung really shines due to the way that we can do this with the devices itself. And then with Samsung Pay, for all of those that have any kind of retail component, right, that idea of how do we make money in VR, follow the mobile model, in-world purchasing, those types of things, right? So as this integration gets better, and especially as built more for the VR developer in mind. Now you're able to have not just enterprise solutions, but also your games that will provide a better user experience and, and smoother checkout for those people where commerce is a part of your experience. Another nice little uh, new thing that's coming out is PhoneCast uh, VR. And so what PhoneCast is, is this is the opportunity for you to essentially, as you see here, right, view your favorite mobile media content on VR, and essentially sync uh, your, your device. So you can mirror 2D mobile media applications on a 200-inch big screen with a, a scenic, nice, calm little 360 background, and uh, essentially a UX to enable users to easily use uh, the mobile applications that, that they know in, in, in virtual reality. Um, also, the fun thing is, as I mentioned, is the ability to use your mobile media apps within VR. And this right here, kind of demonstrates the process. Um, forgive me, because I didn't, I went really left to right and top bottom instead of left and then right. But it kind of shows you, you know, uh, the way that you can go off of existing apps, how you can install your apps, uh, the way that the app mirroring works, uh, and then of course, if you want to do horizontal or portrait view. No, view. Of course, like any good monitor should be, you also have the ability to do modifications to this uh, as well. So the basic things, reposition, brightness, and, and then screen size. And of course, uh, it does offer a calm background because nothing is more nice in uh, VR than uh, you know when it's peaceful and things like that. So, um, so this is, is, again, these are some of the newer things that are coming out uh, from our lab at SRA, Samsung Research. Uh, that we're able to share. Uh, and, and again, it, we really are at the research lab about empowering uh, the community. And before I pass the baton off uh, here to uh, Henry, who will come up and share with you a little bit about the developer program, I just want to say for anyone that is working on uh, web VR or web AR, 
um, please come find me. I'd love to know what it is that you're working on and, and how we can help. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and invite Henry uh, up to uh, the stage where he'll be able to share with you how you can get involved with our developer program and, and some of the other benefits there. So uh, Henry, thank you for saving me. Thank you, Ben. And uh, uh, yeah. great job. Thank you. It's hard to talk after Damon because he did such a great job. But uh, good news, um, I really don't have a lot to share with you other than one slide. And this slide <clears throat> talks about uh, what we do at Samsung to build a great developer community. Um, so when I talk about uh, great developer community, uh, I'm talking about uh, developers uh, of all sizes, all brands, um, that Samsung welcomes into the family and uh, invites everyone to join our program. Um, essentially, uh, we provide uh, typical services offered by uh, other uh, companies, uh, but we do it uh, in a very sincere and um, also uh, open way and provide a lot of personalized services as well. Um, I'd like to point out that our developer program of, um, and our team is based in Mountain View, California. Uh, we actually work uh, in the same building with Damon. Uh, and I'm part of uh, the content and services organization, uh, which focuses exclusively on building relationships with uh, third-party developers. Uh, I can tell you that uh, the program is completely complementary. Um, we provide uh, support and services and a lot of benefits to Android Mobile, VR, AR, and also Tizen developers. And uh, as I said, uh, the door is open. We uh, would like to help you to benefit uh, within the uh, Samsung ecosystem, create uh, unique applications and experiences, and uh, build a successful user base. Thanks to uh, exposure and thanks to being highlighted uh, within a community of Samsung smartphone and other device users. So I would like to briefly talk about uh, several components of the program. First of all, uh, as a member, uh, we'll, you will get an access to the latest technical information, uh, latest SDKs, um, uh, device technology descriptions, and uh, code samples. We, took this, uh, we take this uh, really seriously, and uh, we customize uh, a lot of documentation available. Uh, it's all published uh, on our portal at samsungdevelopers.com, and uh, the access to information is free. Um, I forgot to mention that uh, as a complimentary program, uh, everyone is welcome to join, and we uh, treat every partner equally, regardless of the size or market value or number of people working for the company. I personally uh, uh, focus on the smaller firms, studios, and individual indie developers, so uh, this is, I believe, the, uh, where the innovation is coming from, and we're looking forward uh, to work with everyone. So a couple of words about the support. Uh, we do provide uh, technical and non-technical support, like a lot of companies. Uh, we don't have a limit in terms of how many questions you can ask. You probably have experience with other programs where uh, some of the services are not complementary. In our case, uh, we, and, uh, we don't introduce any limits or cost for you to, uh, to work with us. Um, promotional. Uh, the program cannot be successful uh, if uh, it doesn't provide any type of uh, promotional program or business opportunity for uh, developer program members. So uh, if you join the program, you will learn that uh, we uh, do whatever is possible for you to help you be successful, either in Android mobile space or AR VR space. Um, in Android mobile space, as you can see on the right side, I just published a couple of uh, data points about our uh, own app store. It's a smaller boutique store, but it also, being a small store, provides an opportunity for us to help you to highlight your applications, and as a result of that promotion, uh, you may uh, benefit from acquiring user base, creating downloads, and everything that we do, uh, again, is provided free of charge. All their uh, uh, downloads and users uh, that we provide to you are uh, essentially delivered organically through the promotion in our app store. 
Uh, the situation is obviously slightly different with uh, VR and, uh, and AR applications. We have a small space within uh, the Oculus Store called Samsung Pix, and this is where we can help you to highlight your and promote your uh, VR applications uh, with, in, inside the Oculus Store. Um, number four point, or box on the left side, is the developer events. Uh, for some selected partners, uh, we, um, we will offer an opportunity to be promoted, highlighted, or mentioned at our uh, developer events. And uh, if you don't know that one of uh, the major uh, yearly events is coming up in October, I'll talk about it later. Um, and finally, education. Uh, with this program, we introduced uh, a regular uh, uh, workshops, webinars, um, and also uh, we will be running additional education events uh, throughout the year in different uh, parts of United States and Canada. So all together, uh, all these elements constitute uh, what we call a Samsung Developer Program. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to stop by at our booth. I, I will provide you more information. Um, finally, this is the event I was talking about. Uh, we recently started to uh, promote this event. It's uh, our global developer conference. Um, it is scheduled for October 18 and 19th of this year in San Francisco uh, at Moscone West. Uh, we are expecting uh, um, 7,000 guests. So everyone in this auditorium is welcome to attend the conference. Um, I can tell you that we will be showcasing a lot of different technologies uh, where VR, AR will be um, one of the main components, uh, but we will also focus a lot on IoT stuff, smart things, and uh, um, other technologies that are evolving. So everyone is welcome. That pretty much ends my presentation. And if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, as well as uh, Damon uh, is available for any technical questions or VR-related questions. Yeah, so, um, so, you know, and then we figured that uh, we would give uh, people time to ask questions, because I know that sometimes, you know, seeing presentations is nice, but it's really about when we're able to answer your specific questions. So that's why we tried to wrap up with some time. So um, any questions? Feel free to, I think, step up to the microphone is what they would prefer. Not all at once, a big rush. Good, good. <laughs> no one's going to get trampled. All right, well, then I'll take this time just to share a couple more things. Um, that uh, our browser is also the same browser that works uh, across, like I said, the, the VR headsets, the phones, the television, and then also uh, it's going to have uh, controls from the watch, right? So for the web devs that are out there, please start building cool stuff. Right, you know, I mean, we live in a world now that's on the web that is far beyond parallax. So let's see some cool things, right? Z access, not just index. So, um, so awesome. Well, if there aren't any questions, yes, sir. You just go ahead. I'll repeat the question. If. Uh, So, so essentially, I think um, to, to summarize, it sounds like the, the question is, uh, what are the barriers to essentially um, the, the payment in VR type uh, experiences? Um, and where do I think it's going to be in the next five years? Um, well, I'll start with the second part and work backwards. Um, a great thing I heard someone say is we over project where we are in three years and under project where we are in 10. So I'll leave it at that. Um, now, on the payment side and on the processing, um, the pay team, I think, is what's, what's cool, is they're a part of the W3C web payments working group. 
And, and so right now, there are many different folks that are trying to simplify the experience, and that's not just for web, or web VR, I mean. Um, so you have that. I think what also is going to drive a lot of that is I would say look to the mobile business models, right? All we're doing is saying instead of you looking at a small screen, you're in the screen. And, and so I think a lot of what has been found to work in games uh, just for the mobile device is what's going to transfer over to web VR and I think that, or just VR experiences in general. And, and so that's where I think that, you know, developers now to be cognizant of that, right? Um, I can't speak because I'm not a game developer, but if most of the games are being given away for free because you're making money on the in-world app purchases, that's really hard, I would imagine, to get someone to spend $5 on a game, right? When they're saying, I'll play the 2D version for free. And, and maybe do the upgrades. So I think that there's a lot that could be learned from the mobile because, again, it's, it's, it's not a radical new thing. Wow, inexperienced transactions. No, it's the same. It's just how we're interacting in that experience is different. So I, I know that outside of us, there are a lot of smart people that are working on that um, integration. And then as far as, you know, how do I feel that, you know, in, in times we'll be shopping you know, in, in VR. I think it's just like now, we're watching movies in VR, right? You know, we're doing a lot of things in, in VR, and as those experiences, I think, provide value. I mean, just for me alone, I, I would love the idea, it doesn't even need to be 3D objects, I would just love the idea of being able to see more of the library of things I want to buy, instead of having to constantly scroll and scroll down. So I think there is value in that. Uh, Henry, any uh, input, sir? I agree, no. Okay, that kept that, that simple, so hopefully that nails your point. Yes, sir. As far as uh, web VR compatible content, how do people go about finding, finding that stuff? Do you guys highlight it? Well, well um, we uh, definitely would, or uh, it's Samsung Internet Browser looking for partners, again, that are doing compelling content. Um, outside of that, there is a phenomenal uh, web VR uh, community of folks. So um, you know, depending upon what content you're building for, like your framework, so if you're doing you know, A-Frame, reach out and share with the Mozilla folks. If you're doing React VR, there is a lovely individual named Amber uh, on that team who, um, yeah, oh wow, how convenient, right? It's right there next to you. Uh, they would love to see, I'm sure, some of the stuff that you're working on uh, using that framework. And, and then you know, uh, reach out to the different, I mean, like, not Samsung related, but I run a simple little thing called createwebvr.com. Uh, you know, there's uh, webvr.io that's a showcase. Uh, you know, the Reddit forum, so the list goes on, but, but there's a community out there right now um, that's, that's very active in saying, hey guys, you know, how can we showcase each other's work and, and help give people some good compelling examples? Good question. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you again, everyone, for your time, and uh, enjoy the show. Thank you. Thank you.